people know me as Crow Dog Widow. Um, you've seen me on Facebook. And I want to thank Carla Lee Sampson for coming and playing the beautiful native flute for us as we open today at our gathering. It's an amazing sound. We don't get to hear it very often. It's a real treat to have her with us. So, if I may, I would like to read something that I wrote. I recently had a very serious spinal surgery, and I was recovering during the time that the bulk of the violence was picking up at Standing Rock and feeling very helpless with what I was witnessing in live feeds from all over Standing Rock as people were facing horrible abuses of their human rights and desecration of sacred lands and it struck a terrible nerve in me and every fiber of my being <laughs> wanted to leap into a vehicle and speed off to Standing Rock but I'm unable to do so because my health precludes me from taking such a journey. So I started to look inward and thought that it was necessary to connect with those people who have an affinity with the earth and an affinity with what's going on with our brothers and sisters at Standing Rock and all over the world where indigenous people are being trampled on for nefarious reasons. So if I may read this, I'll read it quickly and then I will introduce several wonderful speakers that we have for you to partake of today. Welcome all my relations to Providence Protects the Sacred. The name of many tribal people translates to the people or the human beings. While we may be of many nations, many ethnicities, many spiritualities, we are first and foremost human beings. We are here today in this historic place that is in essence the ground zero for First Nations people to stand in solidarity with our fellow human beings at Standing Rock, our brothers and sisters who stand at this critical crossroads of our nation, our world, our time, protecting the essence of life for all with their own bodies on the front lines. Mini Wichoni, water is life. We are here as witness that in this time we must embrace one another as one people, one planet under siege, awaiting the time when enough of us wake up and realize we cannot go on perpetually abusing the earth. We cannot go on taking, taking, taking from her. Whether we do so by drilling oil, fracking, coal or uranium mining, decimating sacred ground with our gluttonous need for profit over the good of the people, most often at the expense of the indigenous among us, time and time again. Down all the days of our history on Turtle Island, these United States, and in grandmother land known as Canada, in the deserts and the rainforests, the rivers, lakes, and oceans, since first white contact, our wrong spans the globe. We are here to honor those who have survived over 500 years of adversity since the arrival of Columbus and then the pilgrims and the waves and waves of people that came after them. We are here to acknowledge that grievous wrong has been done, to own it, to bear witness to a history rife with forced assimilation through boarding schools and indentured servitude, through broken treaties, land grabs, manifest destiny, the introduction of disease, confinement to, confinement to reservations, and the constant encroachment upon even those lands which were once deemed undesirable every time a new commodity was found to exploit. 
we are witness to this struggle against the Dakota Access Pipeline and also must turn our eyes to our homeland to see what wrongs are being done under our very noses to recognize that this is all indigenous land. All of it is indigenous land. <laughs> Though it be paved and built upon to examine what we are doing and how we are doing our job as caretakers of that land, when we look at what we have made of our waterfronts, our rivers, our woodlands, our oceans, are we in healthy relationship to it? Do we recognize that these are our family, that the animals in the land are our family, just as we are kin to one another, that all things are related, and what we do to the earth, we do to ourselves. We are the land, we are the water. Mini Wichoni, water is life. I call upon each of us to support the sacred with peace and prayer, with the heartbeat of the drum, with the words from this community, with selfless deeds, with altruism. Let us arm ourselves not with guns or pepper spray, batons or tanks, but with knowledge informed by history, social consciousness, love and compassion for Mother Earth and the environment which nurtures and sustain us. This present moment is an invitation to call all the skeletons from our collective closet, bring them out into the light where they can be recognized for what they are, healed and transformed into something life-sustaining for all. An invitation to hope and to shape our reality anew as we know it could and should be. I thank each and every one of you for answering this call, for coming here today to Providence and to protect that which is sacred, to stand with us for Standing Rock, and I entreat each of you to find beautiful and creative ways to make your voices heard to make an impact through acts of service, to exist in harmony with one another, and to renew your relationship with the natural world. And when you feel weak or hopeless, remember these words spoken by Tecumseh and take heart. Now we are weak and many of our people are afraid. But hear me, a single twig breaks but the bundle of twigs is strong. Someday I will embrace our brother tribes and draw them into a bundle, and together we will win our country back. When I was on my couch recovering from this surgery, I felt broken like one twig and helpless to affect any change or turn the tide. So I was that twig weak, afraid, and alone. You are the bundle, and together we are strong. Miniwichoni, water is life. Oh!